What's up guys and welcome to a special episode of Headphones Neil Reviews. For this review I am actually getting this episode out earlier than I wanted to and from when you guys are probably expecting this is more of the weekend um, recaps and reviews and stuff like that but um, in planning out upcoming episodes it's about that time for my monthly review and episode about the Knots 100 year celebrations so um based on my schedule i thought i would get that nos review out during this week but i also wanted to get this recap episode out just so i'm not bulking up on a couple of weeks of episodes um i did have some time this weekend to catch up on some of the shows that i had a chance to watch um the main exception to this review is going to be that i didn't see the latest episode of Marvel Secret Invasion, mostly just because it comes out on a Wednesday, so um, and because episodes come out after that, I have a chance to watch it. Since this is um, an extra episode, I'm kind of just following on the coattails of the last episode to give some updates and kind of where I'm at and kind of basically push through where I um, some of the shows that I usually watch just to get them caught up and that sort of thing. So with that being said, since the last episode, um, I did finish Game of Thrones Season 3. So we have the Red Wedding, which is still a hard um, episode to watch, especially towards the end. But it does set up the next couple of seasons worth of uh, show content. So um, Arya and the Hound, and then ultimately Arya going to Bravo to get started getting her, tra her training for the last couple of seasons. Uh, we have the Terry and Sansa wedding, uh, which is going to set up the next couple of seasons for um, their relationship, what happens to Joffrey, and all of that stuff. And then just general stuff like um, Tywin Lannister becoming the, king, hand, the Hand of the King, so his stuff for I think next season. But since my memory of the seasons are all off, it's kind of one of those things where um, we're going to have ultimately his death. So. All that sort of stuff is now set up now that we're done with um, Game of Thrones Season 3. Um, the interesting part of this for me was um, in the episode with the Red Wedding, we have those knowing looks by Walder Frey. So in retrospect, it's one of those things where um, now, now when you see his uh, reaction and looks when he's looking at Rob Stark that he knows he's uh, teamed up with um, Tywin Lannister and uh, taken his offer. So all of the stuff that goes on in the episode is all for show, so, um, so that they can get take their um, or take their actions and all that to end the war and all of that stuff. So um, with that being said, I'll jump uh, right into season four and continue my watch through there. Um, I had a chance to cat watch the latest episode of The Walking Dead, Dead City. So this is season one, episode four, Everybody Wins a Prize. Um, so now we have uh, Maggie Negan and the crew that's uh, basically the crew of rebels now sneaking in through the uh, sewers to get into the main complex where the crowd is staying. The crowd hears a whistle of Negan and um, starts to come out after him. He unleashes a bunch of zombies on the, the rebels. So essentially we have the stars of the assault here so um overall it didn't really resolve anything but we had now now that the croat from the previous episode knows that negan's in town now that um, negan has made himself more aware to the croat that he's back they've had their little conversation um that the island of manhattan is supposed to be the new sanctuary so we'll kind of see where it all rounds out from here I was half expecting that Negan was going to um, turn the tables on us as the viewers and take the cross offer to reclaim his title as head of the saviors, uh, kill the marshal, kill uh, Maggie's son, or even take him hostage and then um, basically just to retake his title and throne. That can still happen, I think, if, but I think so. It's probably one of those things where he's playing as being a friend to Maggie so he can get to the Croat, take out the Croat, and 
become the de facto leader again. So we'll kind of see where um, things go from here. But we do have that final confrontation essentially set up. And then I also had a chance to watch the latest two episodes of Jack Ryan. So season four, episode three and four, uh, we have Jack Ryan stepping down from the CIA so he can um, go after all um, these rogue elements for those um, operations that he shut down. Um, he has his former boss, uh, Jim Greer, reinstated to uh, into his position. So uh, we have that going on. So and then we f have Jack Ryan and the crew um, going to the marketplace to find out what's going on. Essentially, it's a human trafficking. So um, all of that to get to the main guy there to find out what's going on with these um, illegal operations, who they're funding and all of that sort of stuff. Um, and then finally for Knights of the Old Republic, for as far as that gameplay goes, I didn't have too much time to play the past few days, but I did have a chance to finish up Kashyyyk, so I got through the lower Shadowlands. I found um, Zalbar's father and had him and saved him, showed him Baka's blade so that they could, um, uh, or he could reclaim his title and have Chundar step down because um, the people, the um, other Wookiees realized that um, Chundar, uh, Zalbar's younger brother, was taking advantage of them. Uh, we also find out what happened to the missing Wookiee as well, that he was in league with um, Zerka and doing various things with the traders, so um, that side quest was finished. And then we helped the uh, Wookiee that was um, making his way through the Shadowlands, being attacked by these invisible warriors who turned out to be Mandalorians who are basically practicing, I guess, or training for in the Shadowlands for to become better warriors. So just basically doing all the light sided quests for all that stuff. Um, because on Tatooine, when you are approached by that Twi'lek with a data pad, um, that set of missions I declined because they are all uh, dark side missions. That's the quest with the Geno Haradin or something like that. Basically, you're um, joint helping this Rodian take out his competition to become leader of this secret organization. So because you're killing off innocent people, you get all these dark side points. I ultimately turned down turned that down so I wouldn't have to worry about getting dark side points and then having to work my way away from that to get light side points that can't offset that. So um, if you do accept the missions, there is a quest to kill off the, the attacks that are in the lower Shadowlands of Kashyyyk. Maybe the Upper Shadowlands, I forget exactly where, but um, if you take his quest and you find one of those guys um, who's a shape-shifting uh, killer there or assassin or whatever, so uh, that part is able to be skipped. So um, like I said, lo lo now that the lo Lower Shadowlands are done, um, the Wookiee society is restored to the rightful uh, ruler, so namely Zalbar's father. Um, that's basically all set up and done and we can move on to other planets. So, um, now that, uh, Jolie Bindo's in the party, I'm going to head on over to Manan. Um, just so just a bit of heads up there that I'm going to start with, um, Karth and Kandra so that I can try and activate the rest of their quests. Um, notably the, uh, Dustal story arc for, uh, Karth where his son had joined the Sith and his M. Corbin. And then, um... Candrus has passed sins, uh, catching up to him with his former crewmate and then having the showdown with that guy on uh, Tatooine in the Dune Sea. So that's all there is for that. So like I said, uh, this is mo mostly just a recap um, update episode for where I'm at. So it's the last episode. So I'm kind of just titling the episode um, Weekending 7-7-23 bonus um, just to catch up on all the stuff that I've watched um, so that I can get that knots or the next episode of the Knots review out for later this week. Um, so around the same time as you see these episodes, that's around the time I'll have the Knots episode. So around, I'm expecting Friday to the weekend um, at the moment. So look out for that on the fees when it's public. Um, but that's really about it for this particular episode. Um, as far as Marvel Secret Invasion goes, um, if anything, I'll probably put a quick um, recap review or something like my hot take root thoughts and stuff like that up on social media, um, notably Twitter and Mastodon. Um, if I do have any thoughts on it, um, if not, I'll basically do a re um, quick recap update on the following 
week's episode of the podcast and just do two weeks worth of reviews all at once. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, or anything like that, you can comment on this post on social media, notably Twitter and Mastodon. Um, I do decide to consolidate uh, where I post stuff a little bit. Um, So basically, I've taken out Counter Social just because it's part of the Fediverse. So um, I think you should be, if you um, take my Mastodon profile, you should be able to plug it into Counter Social and see it there. Same thing for things like PixelFed. So I'm not going to be posting to those two sites. And then Instagram is just kind of a... um, extraneous thing that I was testing just to see if I would get back into using it and I wasn't really feeling it. I'm keeping the account active just to browse around and like if I want to view someone's profile or a post or something then I can view it. Um, so I'm at the moment I'm going to focus on Twitter and Mastodon. Uh, once I can get once I get access to Blue Sky then I'm planning on doing a review with um, Blue Sky, Twitter, Mastodon and Threads. As far as Thread goes, since the last episode, um, I've kind of stopped using that just because it feels like, it actually feels like a light version of uh, Twitter where um, everybody that you follow and don't follow, like uh, recommended or suggested people to follow, show up all in one feed. So you can't actually split it out like Twitter does. It doesn't necessarily have to be something like Twitter where you see two tabs, but it would be nice to have um, like a feed of people you follow and then a discovery tab um, to um, show like recommended people to follow related content people you might be interested in so it kind of feels like a weird mishmash of like what Instagram is up to but in a uh, Twitter layout so um, it's okay it's fine um, it's not any better or worse than Twitter as far as I can tell so if you prefer one over the other it's fine but as far as I can tell it's basically just Twitter light um, but it doesn't feel too much different as far as content and stuff like that. Just less, it kind of feels basically just like Twitter, but with fewer options. Um, so that's kind of why I'm not going to use it at the moment, but I'll probably revisit it from time to time and keep the account active just to see where things are going at some point in the future. The main other downside for me is that there's no web client at the moment. So if I wanted to visit the site like via a mobile web browser on the desktop, I don't think there's anything yet. So um, I'm going to check that out one more time just to be on the safe side. But as far as I could tell, it's app only at the moment, notably iOS and Android. So um, that's kind of also a downside as well, uh, mostly because, again, like with Twitter and Mastodon, you can visit on um, your desktop browser, mobile web browser via an app. So there's a few different options. So. I'm not sure why they didn't do that with threads, but maybe it's something that's coming and um, Meta is just trying to take advantage of the general um, dislike of uh, Twitter at the moment by getting the app out now. So uh, that's all I'm going to probably say for threads at the moment. Nothing bad, but it's not great, I guess. So that's kind of why I'm not going to really use it. It's not like I said, it's nothing bad. Same thing like with Instagram. It's not bad, but I'm just not feeling it at the moment. So that's all there is for this particular episode. So if you want to um, check out all the social or get links to the show, social media sites, uh, past episodes, subscription links, and all that good stuff, you can check that out up on the website at headphonesneal.reviews. Um, the Patreon is patreon.com slash pateln01 for um, access to so basically support the show, add free versions of the podcast. Um, in this case, I'm going to do like I did the last episode where I released the patron version and the public version at the same time, just because it was an unexpected bonus episode. But um, normally in the for um, episode releases, patrons get early access to episodes and the link to the video version, and then the public version comes out usually a day or so after that. Um, and of course, you can subscribe to the video version of the podcast, um, check out gameplay videos, and things like that on the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash PatelN01. But that is all for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.